Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name's Saga and I studied aerospace engineering at university. Now I'm going to rank all the modules slash courses slash subjects that I did in basically order of coolness, hardness, and you know, just a mixture of how I like them pretty much. So I'm gonna rank them from S tier to D tier. Okay, so let's start with all the first year modules. First up we have ACS1321, which is the introduction to systems analysis and control. It was basically all about transfer functions, uh, systems. I didn't think it was that exciting. It wasn't too difficult, I'd probably say average difficulty, so I'm gonna give it a B. So next up we have AER120, which is aerospace design, and this module was actually to do with like planes and aer aircraft and rockets and so on, so it's probably one of the most exciting first year modules because you feel like a real aerospace engineer doing this. I'd say it was quite an easy module though, especially if you already know quite a bit about planes and so on before you join university, and therefore I would say I'll give this S tier ranking. Next up we have AER192, which is engineering engineering, solid, liquids and gas. This one was probably one of the most toughest courses in first year because it covers things like thermodynamics, aerodynamics and materials all in one course and you sit this uh, as a three hour exam at the end of the year. So for that reason, I'm gonna give this course a C. So next up we have MAS 156, which is the first year mathematics course. And this I found is pretty cool as a course to do because I enjoyed doing maths and it was quite similar to what I did for further maths at A-level. Um, so it wasn't too difficult, but it wasn't too easy. But then again, I do enjoy just doing maths just because I don't know, why not? So I'm gonna give this one a A. Next up we have MAT 1643, introduction to mechanical properties and structural materials. And this one's all about like materials such as, so understanding the crystal structure such as like hexagon close packed and so on. Um, I particularly don't enjoy materials and I found this course, it wasn't too difficult, but I just didn't find it interesting. So I'm gonna give it a D. Next we have MEC 194, engineering statics and dynamics. And this course was basically stuff to do with like analyzing trusses and also understand curvilinear motion. Um, I personally found this course actually quite difficult, um, so I'm therefore going to give it a D as well. Next up we have AER123, and this was Introduction to Electric Circuits, which was, well, as the name says, suggests, is all to do with electronics, so just understanding how to do analysis of a circuit, and also trying to understand what a diode is, and sort of how they work, and so on. Um, I enjoyed the subject, it was quite straightforward, so I'm gonna give this an A. The last first year module I did was AR107, which was avionic systems, and this was all to do with uh, redundant systems, trying to understand why you have redundancy, and things even like, such as how to calculate um, the pressure and Mach number based on some readings that an aircraft sensor has. So. This course was super easy um, and therefore I'm going to give it a B because it was easy but it was like mediocre interest. Alright, so let's move on to the second year module. So first up we have ACS 230 which is control systems and design analysis which is kind of building on the control systems module I had in first year and it just goes more in depth on this area. So I think the course was, you know, somewhat okay. It wasn't too difficult, wasn't too easy, but I'd say interest-wise, it was probably about mediocre, so that's why I'm gonna give this one a C. Next we have AER284, which is aerostructures, and this was all to do with stuff like bending moments and, you know, I-beams and so on. And I thought this course was actually quite interesting and also pretty straightforward and easy, so I'm gonna give this one an A. So next up we have AER293, which is Applied Aerospace Thermodynamics, which I thought was quite an interesting module and also quite easy and straightforward. I mean, it has this challenging parts, but basically the course covers things like thermodynamics, like transient and steady state values, and also stuff to do with like heat transfer along fin and so on. So I think because it's quite an interesting course um, and some aspects were easy, some aspects were difficult, I'm still gonna give this an S because it's actually quite an enjoyable subject to learn. Next up we have COM161, which is the introduction to programming and problem solving, which is basically a course where they teach you how to learn and use Python. Um, and it's really basic. Honestly, it's probably one of the most easiest modules I've ever done because I know that because I got 90% in that module and that was basically without any effort whatsoever. So I give this an S tier, even though like the content was boring because I just already knew it, but it was probably the easiest module I've done. Next up we have MAS241, which is Mathematics 2. So basically the second year module of maths. Um, so it does build on the first year maths module. However, it does add some more topics and areas to learn. And I'd say it's not too difficult. It was actually quite straightforward. I know I actually got higher in my second year maths paper than I did in my first year maths paper. So 
for that reason, I am going to give this module AA. Next we have MAT 2730, which is the selection and processing of aerospace metals. And this course is basically t telling you about like how rolling, casting, and all that sort of stuff is used to make materials. I find it quite boring because I personally don't like materials. Um, and it's also kind of tricky because a lot of it was content based and I hate content based subjects so for that reason I'm going to give this a D. Next up we have AR223 which is the introduction to electric circuits again but this is because we do the first half of this course and our first year and the second half in the second year so I'm going to give this one an A. Next up we have AR2350 which is material selection and fracture mechanics and this course, it was sort of split half and half for me. So the material section part, I really despised and hated because it was very content heavy. But the fracture mechanics side, I thought was quite fun because it was in, like to do with equations and maths to figure out, you know, how long a crack has to be until you have like a complete failure and stuff like that in essence. So I'd say I'd give this module a, a solid B. Okay, so next up we have AR291, which is dynamics of aerospace structures and machines. And this is basically all to do with understanding the vibrations and so on in aircraft. And also, for example, if an aircraft is banking, what's like the load factor on the aircraft. So for that reason, I'm gonna give it a solid B. Okay, so next up we have AR298, which is aerospace fluids engineering, which is really a core subject in your aerospace degree because it's all basically about fluid mechanics and compressible flows and compressible flows, Newtonian flows, laminar flows. So basically the hardcore fluid stuff you need to know. And for that reason, I'm gonna give this module an S. And the last module for second year that I did was AER 299, which is ground and flight training, which was literally as it sounds. So I sat my ground school exams for my private pilot's license and also had the opportunity to have five hours as a pilot in a small single-seater C-152 aircraft. Um, so I'd say this is one of the most favorite modules I did, probably the most enjoyable modules as well, because I mean, how often do you get to fly a plane? And so for that reason, I am gonna have to put this as an S tier module. Let's move on to my third year. The module codes will look a bit different because I did them on my study abroad year in Sydney. First up, we have Aero 9660, which is Advanced Aerospace Propulsion, which is covers things like spool analysis so in essence if you have like a, a turbojet how do you measure the pressure here and here and so on um, and it also covered things like rocketry as well so i'm gonna give this a s tier ranking because it was quite interesting and it wasn't too difficult um so yeah definitely an s tier subject next up we have mech 4305 which is fundamental and advanced vibrations analysis and this module basically covered things like machine condition monitoring and things to do with hamilton's principles um, I'd say this is one of the most difficult modules I've done. Um, it was interesting, but then again, it was quite difficult, so therefore I'm going to have to give this a C rank. Next up, we have MMAN4400, which is Engineering Management, and this was probably one of the hardest courses I think I've ever seen at UNSW. It was super challenging, and it was all to do with managing a company and understanding profits and stuff like that. I mean. It was weird because it didn't seem like it was supposed to be difficult, but it ended up being difficult, so I'm not too sure what went on there. Um, but for that reason, I am gonna give it a D. Next up, we have Aero 3630, which was aerodynamics. And in this subject, we basically covered things like stream functions and streamlines. And it was interesting to learn all this stuff, but I think some of the maths was a bit challenging. So I'm gonna give this a, a solid B. Next up, we have Aero 4620, which is dynamics of aerospace vehicle systems and avionics. And this covered things like, you know, hydraulic systems, um, pneumatic systems, and also trying to understand sensors that an aircraft has. And what it does and so on so i'd say it's quite an interesting course to do it wasn't too difficult it was um, actually you know a reasonable amount of difficulty especially for a third year subject so for that reason i am going to give this a a and the final module that i did was mech 4620 which was computational fluid dynamics and this was basically well as the name suggests all to do with cfd so learning how to perform cfd simulations and so on and i think this is probably one of the most crucial and most practical um, courses that you can do and it will help you in industry if you do decide to become an aerospace engineer and so for that reason I am going to put it as an S tier subject. So moving on to the fourth and final year modules which also make you into the Chad engineer you want to be. First one is MEC 449 which was 
advanced engineering fluid dynamics, which is all to do with shockwaves, incompressible flow, compressible flow, the types of shockwaves you have, like Bioshock and oblique shocks, and I think it's a highly interesting subject, and for that reason, I'm going to give it an A. Mech 463, Advanced Aerospace Propulsion Technology. This module was a highly interesting topic because it covered things like rockets, turbofans, turbojets, rotation detonation engines, and also propellers, so it covered every single type of propulsion technology that exists, and it was super interesting because there was a lot of things to learn. Um, it was quite there was there was quite a bit of maths, which I think is good, and there was like a good mix of content as well. So ultimately, I'd say this subject is an S tier subject purely because the topics that I covered was actually quite interesting, and therefore I was engaged with that subject. Next, we have AER 476, which is the design and manufacturing of composite materials, and this basically covered things like how do you make carbon fiber, how do you make uh, glass fiber, how do you join these types of materials together. Um, I personally didn't find it that much fun because I just don't really like materials and so on. So I'd say um, I'd give this a, a D rank. The last ever module I studied was Mech 462, which is aviation safety and aeroelasticity. And this is a weird module because it sort of combined two different areas. So one was just aviation safety and one was all to do with aeroelasticity. So the aviation safety side was all to do with root cause analysis and you know trying to understand what happens when a plane crashes and so on. And the aeroelasticity thing is, well, as you can tell, it's just all to do with aeroelasticity. So stuff like flutter and vibrations and so on. So I think this course was quite interesting. Um, definitely not the most enjoyable course, but not the not not a difficult course either. So I'd say I'll give this a solid B. So there we have it. There's all my university modules for studying aerospace ranked from D to S. And if you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe and also like the video. And if you want to see a video basically explaining whether or not you should study aerospace, do check out this other video I have over here. And I have like a, a box here, it should appear. So enjoy. Thanks for watching, see you in another one.